Okay, here we are. Here I am, not you. You're not with me. I'm by myself again. I'm at my shop, you know, my shop, which I started building the office. You studs behind me. Oh, stud right here. But anyways, yep, and uh, they're selling the building, so no office for, for old land. Bummer. We got a 66 Impala sitting down there, staying warm though. You know, so I'm okay. What we're gonna do today is find the wire and breaker sizes. Every bit of what I tell you, um, I'm going off the code book and what I do in practical application, but some things are left, not for interpretation, but uh, you might have a heavier duty device and uh, you need to look on a name plate, name plate rating all the time to see what it draws, uh, to see what the amperage is. That's what you look for, the amperage. Uh, look for the voltage to know if it's 110 or 220, what have you. But we're just doing residential application right now. So, um, so look for the amperage, and that will determine your wire size. Really easy stuff. Just This is just the basic stuff that's meant for the homeowner or the handyman or what have you. Just so you don't get your uh, ass in a sling, so to speak. You know. All right, so with the basic stuff, 15 amp breaker, 14 two wire. Simple as that. 20 amp breaker, 12 two. If you go to Home Depot, 14 two is a white one. 12 two is the yellow one. 30 amp is number 10. Home Depot, that's an orange one. These are the they go heavier and heavier gauges. 40 amp is number eight, which is usually a 220 volt circuit. It's a number eight. Some things you might need a neutral on. It's, that's why I didn't put 8-2. That's number 8. A neutral would be used like in a stove. Excuse me. Sorry, I had to touch my phone. It said low battery. So I better not be too much of a freaking blowhard here. But number 8, you could have 3 wire um, because you might have a neutral in something. And back in the day, the stoves, if you had a range or something rather, it didn't require neutral. Just two hots for that filament to heat up, or whatever you call that thing in the stove, to heat up, and you didn't have a neutral, you had no electronics. Now, because you have the electronics, there's a transformer in there, it reduces the voltage down. Regardless, that's when you need a neutral. That, and for a dryer, is when you need a neutral. Um, so that's where you are with that. 50 to 60 amp is number six. These are all copper. We can get into aluminum. With aluminum, you have to step the size of the wire up one gauge because aluminum isn't as good of a conductor of electricity as copper is. So something that might require uh, like a 100 amp service, a number two aluminum would do that. But in copper, you could step that down to a number four copper because that's the next step. So that, that being said, we're going to do just the quick and dirty stuff. Okay, 20 amp for your kitchen plugs, you need two small appliance circuits. And so if you have a microwave or a toaster oven, or you or you do have a countertop microwave or whatever else you have, so it does, doesn't take out the whole kitchen, they now require you to have at least two um, small appliance kitchen uh, circuits, 20 amp. That's it. Everything in the kitchen has to be GFI protected, not just six in, or six feet or 12, uh, what an asshole six feet from the water as it used to be. Everything in that kitchen is GFI protected. Dishwashers, they're usually 15 amp, uh, but if you've got a heavy duty one, like a commercial one, you know, again, check that name plate. It's a little, I don't know, three inch by three inch or whatever plate, look for amperage. It says current, full load current. They're usually 15 amp. Disposals, unless they're a heavy duty disposal, that's 15 amp. So 20 amp kitchen plugs, those are going to go to your, that's 20 amp, that's 12 2. We got our dishwasher circuit, 14 2, that's 15 amp. Disposal, 15 amp, 14 2. Microwave, has to be on a dedicated circuit, it just draws too much. You have anything else on there, it's going to pop that breaker. So microwave's 20 amp circuit, 12 2, simple as that. Furnace, most of them are 15 amp, but there's a lot of heavy duty, high efficiency ones. For the more part, 15 amp for the furnace. That's a 14 2. 
AC outside the condensers, they usually they start at 30 amp. Usually nothing less than that. You can put as big a wire or breaker as you want, but on the outside of your house, you're going to have a disconnect, which so you could disconnect the power to feed that AC. Whatever it's fused at, just because you have some gigantic wire and a 100 amp breaker, doesn't mean that circuit's rated at 100 amp. It's only rated at its weakest point, and that is the fuse sizes. So I'll say, look at full load current on there, on the AC. You're going to fuse it accordingly, but they start usually at about 30 amp. 30 amp, number 10, they don't require a neutral. 20 amp, your laundry circuit, that's another 12 to 20 amp. That you, it has to be GFI protected. Yeah, it has to stick a GFI in there, and it's dedicated because it's, what, by the water, right? The water heaters, electric water heaters, are usually 30 amp. Again, unless they're heavy duty, 30 amp. Number 10, right? You've got a uh, dryer, the 220 volt dryers. They're usually 30 amp. This one you really got to check because the older ones drew more. Now they're usually only about 30 amp. But again, you're going to look at the nameplate rate, nameplate rating. It's usually around the back of that uh, the dryer, and they're usually 30 amp. Ranges like your range, you know, double ovens, what have you. Those ones usually vary, but they're somewhere around. I'm going to say 40 amp usually. 50, 60 amp for the bigger ones. So 40 amp, if you had a 40 amp range, you'd use number 8 copper. Well, if any bigger, 50 to 60 amp, you use number 6 copper. If you use, you could use number 6 aluminum, but it'd only be rated for 40 amp because it's not as good as a, a, a conductor. Now, I've had somebody come up and on the tutorials talk about uh, aluminum wiring in their house. Well, you can have that, it's not against the code. But you cannot have two dissimilar metals touching underneath a lug because they'll oxidize. And once you get oxidation between the wire, because they, with heat with a load, it'll expand. And then with the cold, it'll retract and expand and retract. You get oxidation in between those wires and they'll separate and then they'll start arcing. And that's how fires start in there. But you can put them on, you could tap off that circuit on a plug, tap onto the terminals of the plug and just continue on, so long as they're not under the aluminum terminals. So it's not a big deal, I mean, anymore with that knob and tube, they have people take them out or what have you, uh, to have you rewire the houses. You don't see them catching on fire every day, oh no, the aluminum house, the aluminum wire in the house, oh humanity, <laughs> look at, no, that shit just doesn't happen. If you don't touch it, if it ain't broke, why fix it? You know, but uh, of course your house could be worth a little bit more if you, sit there and you bullshit them and blow smoke. Oh, look, I rewired my house and everything else. It was fine before that, but for all these intents and purposes, it's okay to have aluminum. It's okay to have knob and tube. It's just when you disturb it, you do anything with it, you have to do it per code. So, 